Hello my soccer universe. My problems are not quite solved yet, but I'm good enough to do a review of the Champions League action over the past two days or past two evenings better. And I gotta say, I mean, if it wasn't for Real Madrid um, having serious struggles with Leipzig, it was kind of blah again. But it's also down to the draw that actually we, I kind of lauded of saying, you know, we kept the favorites apart and it was almost like a seeding system was used. However, I would have hoped for at least a little bit more excitement on Tuesday. At least we got a little bit on Wednesday as well. Um, the question is of the four teams that have moved on. I mean, City, yes, it was on the Copenhagen, but looked really, really easy peasy going on. PSG also what kind of cool and kind of doing well against Real Sociedad. However, this is not a Real Sociedad from the fall. So we gotta see where PSG is going and who they will play next. I think this will be interesting, but I think have them earmarked for maybe an upset run. Bayern Munich is still something that I cannot gauge. Uh, in the end, it was an easy win over Lazio. And then we have Real Madrid, who I think generally seen as probably the second highest favorite in the competition. Spoiler alert, at the moment, my model ranks them not in second place. You can guess who the second place team is. I'll reveal it in just a little bit, although they are not second favorite at this very moment. What the Real Madrid were showing against Leipzig, I, to be honest, they should have been eliminated. They should have been eliminated and then we were talking a whole different story. I even think that suddenly Ancelotti would have been under serious amount of pressure. So he's still kind of the king of Madrid in a way. Uh, so that is one thing. On the other side, the last time we said that the Real Madrid are not Champions League material, they actually won the whole darn thing. You know, beating PSG and uh, your cities, your Chelsea's and the Liverpool as well. So yeah, still wide open, still don't know. It still feels that it's Manchester City's to lose because we also don't know what Arsenal will do. In any case, I would say let's jump briefly, talk about the few games. I want to start uh, in San Sebastian where Kylian Mbappé basically qualified PSG for the next round. Yes, after all the drama surrounding him, not playing in Ligue 1. Yes, I think Luis Enrique was saving him. And that was enough. And uh, yes, he may not have been happy. But in the end, he scores the goal. Uh, he, he scores the 2 2 goal. I mean, the first version was brilliant. The way he has, has a ball on the edge of the box and then dances around and takes from an acute angle a shot. It was a brilliant goal in the 50th minute. And also the way he then scores the second one, where he runs on goal and, you know, has the goalie guessing. He needs to open up the, the one corner. And so he puts it in the short corner. And it was a great pass by Lee Kang in as well. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Been more when Evan Mbappé had had the ball. I think at the halftime, uh, there was a statistic that he only had seven passes in the entire because every time he received the ball, he basically went for the goal. Which take it or for what 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 is? Yes, it's great that he has uh, he wants to have end product, but I think Luis Enrique wants to be wants him to be a little bit more of a team player as well. Uh, Credit to Real Sociedad, they at least tried to get back in into the game. They scored a goal through Barranchea that was disallowed for offside. They get then the consolation goal laid on through Merino. I don't want to say that Real Sociedad, just by the balance of play, were the worst team. However, you could always feel that PSG, if they needed, they could get to that next level, which is something you don't always say about PSG, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I could see with a little bit of luck of a draw as, as well the PSG can make a semi-final quite easily in this comp competition is still very very potent up front defense is always the question for them um i had really high hopes for bayern against lazio to be honest uh that we see at least something that we get a little bit of a <laughs> exciting uh draw no uh bayern controlled that one controlled that one all the way through, uh, pushed Lazio around. Lazio were only there for, for defending, which is not a good tactic. I still wonder in the 36th minute if Giro Immobile is just a few centimeters further towards the line and the uh, deflected ball by De Ligt really hits well his head. If he pulls it into the net, 
I think this is where Lazio move on. And so three minutes later, Herr Hurricane. It looked weird, but he makes the one nil, and then just just, just before for the F, uh, the Licht seemingly score all the world. However, it was Thomas Müller that put it in internet, and I really thought at that time this was offside. This was offside. I mean, <laughs> you look at. I know they're semi-automated offside. I hope they checked it. I mean, no one af afterwards said anything, so I assume it was not offside. It was just margin and not offside. Maybe some shoulder or whatever. I mean, it, it, judging offside, but just if you look um, with your eyes, you know, it's really hard to see all the feet and all the bodies and so on. So I take it, it was no, no offside. There was only one winner from that moment on. I think the Allah were done here. Harry King quickly scores a third. Done and dusted. Done, done, dusted. Bayern, uh, this was, after all the travails of the last few weeks, this was exactly what the doctor ordered. An easy win over Lazio. You move on. That's all you needed. Manchester City, I mean, it was all about playing them playing Liverpool on the weekend. Although I think this is not such an important game because all the um, uh, injury trouble that Liverpool have. So um, it's probably an easier game than it would have been otherwise. On the other side, you know, they had a nice training session. I said in the short video, I say it again. They had a nice training session against Copenhagen. Uh, with Akanji after Alvarez corner scoring already in the 55th minute and Alvarez himself uh, scoring just four minutes later. Goalie did not look good on that one. It should have been an own goal. Okay, oh, Kaka an own goal by the goalie. Uh, but I have to say this was really easy for Man City at that, that point. Unex totally expected. It was their earliest 2-0 lead in the Champions League ever. Yeah, let it a little bit flow, da 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 da, and Copenhagen and the fans were supporting them, and I, th I think they were even rarely recognized by the CCC fans, which I think is a little bit patronizing if I think about it. Be it as it may, Elianusi actually pulls one back. That was the point where the uh, where Copenhagen really they they also enjoyed being there because they were not expected to be there. Should have been uh, Manchester United making it there. Yes, we would not have gotten a Manchester result there. That that would have been fun if the draw would have allowed it, if United would have moved on and then they play against City right after they play in the league, that would have been really, really cool. In any way, but also really, really one-sided because, uh, let's face it, Manchester Derby was also a training session. And Erling Haaland, just before the halftime, makes it 3-1. Second half, not much to talk about. Real Madrid against Leipzig, there's more to talk about. <laughs> I mean, it's the 122nd birthday of Real Madrid. They play at home. They have a 1-0 lead. And I think that was the problem. They did not know how to approach that game. Go we all out on uh, uh, an attack. Do we absorb the pressure? Do we attack? Um, and how do we do with the front two? I mean, we don't have a striker. So let's play Vinny and Bellingham up front. The problem is that Vinny drifts left and Bellingham goes back. So you have no one up front there, which uh, was already one problem. But there were way more problems that Leipzig posed to them. The problem with Leipzig is finishing. It's also already in the Bundesliga. They cannot finish their chances. I mean, it was early. Yes, it was an, would have been all offset. But Szeszko is running alone on goal. There are two other players there. He doesn't see the pass. And the writing was on the wall right there. Openda uh, should have scored at least one goal in the first half. Didn't. Whistles at the halftime for Real Madrid. It didn't get bad in the second half. Yes, Rodrigo then came up for Kamavinga to give a little bit more speed on the other side. I mean, the speed was more, was missing also for Real Madrid. And we have to also mention, I mean, uh, there are major defenders and gold goalkeeper missing for Real Madrid. Although Lunin's numbers overall are quite good. But Leipzig continued to press. Um, in the 54th minute, then probably the most contentious uh, scene where, honestly, Vinny Jr. should have been sent off. This is the Real Madrid bonus. Without that, Vinny should have been gone. The way, I mean, first he pushes Orban to the ground. That's a yellow card. But then when or uh, Orban gets up and he goes at his neck, that's a red card. I'm sorry. Um, refereeing, that's what he said, Davide Massa. I usually laud Italian referees, although as of late, da, 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 but I think they're over probably the best of the bunch, of a not so good bunch. But that ref, refereeing, let's say, was Madrid friendly overall. Uh, Real Madrid, uh, Leipzig had a few, you know, free kicks and and and, and so on that were all of, all of, all of Scott. And then one counter where Schlager lo loses the ball and it goes very, very fast. Bellingham then uh, has, has the ball. Vinny makes a nice run. Car, 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 car
The only the only negative is that Vinny shouldn't have not have been on on the pitch. However, Leipzig get themselves back into the game three minutes later. I mean, it was what was about, about to tell me? Don't worry, there will be no overtime. Yeah, three minutes later, Orban actually has it in after a round cross. The problem is Leipzig cannot convert their chances. I mean, Openda, who has been missing, 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 comes off. Paulsen comes on. Baumgartner, Austrian, comes on for Sheshko. They're really throwing a El- Elif Elmas. You know. Throwing every, every, everything on, but um, Real Madrid can get it defended. Very, very late in stoppage time. A, 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 actually, Dan Daniel hits the crossbar, so there could have been overtime. I just have to have the feeling, despite playing so badly, um, somehow it would have fallen Real Madrid's way. But we also have to acknowledge that if Leipzig had a good finisher up front, or if they could finish their chances, in both games, Real Madrid would have been out right now. And now they're going to win the Champions League, probably, uh, having said that. But, you know, it's early doors. If we look at the, fav- the favorites, they're still on the second favorite. Manchester City, 25% for winning it. Real Madrid, 15 uh, And then Bayern is up there as well. And I, I feel kind of uncomfortable about it. Um, I already said it. Uh, Real Madrid and Bayern are not second and third in the day. No, it's actually Inter that are rated second at, at the moment. It's just that they have not moved on yet and that actually moves them below. I actually think that everyone, nobody at the moment would like to play Inter. I have to say, say that Inter look really, really un, 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 undeniable. Real Madrid and Bayern are two flawed. City, I think, are really good. I don't know if Arsenal have the European experience or already, and you know the rest is probably also rants. Uh, I also want to so- show you the table of the changes because it's so funny. Um, yes, Bayern had a big boost because suddenly they were out- outsiders. Uh, PSG, of course, they win and uh, improve the rating as well, and Real Madrid Real- have, have have big wins. But Inter's rating has been so improved that without playing, they mo- they uh, they have an eight percent chance improvement of winning. And overall moving up, uh, whereas Dortmund is the exact opposite. When we come back next week for the Champions League, I think we have a better set of fixtures that are all kind of still open. I mean, Arsenal Porto, I mean, all of these games were not great the first time around. However, I think there is potential for an overtime and, and, and tough fights. The way Porto have been trending, they could give our Arsenal some uh, trouble. However, the way Arsenal have been playing, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Barcelona-Napoli, um, <laughs> it's the blind against the paralyzed. However, that has some charm in it. We have Atletico Madrid-Inter. Um, as I said, Inter are an amazing team. However, Atleti at home is also pretty good. And then Dortmund-PSV. Uh, PSV, the best Dutch team against the flawed door, 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 door side. I think there is at least potential there for it being a little bit more exciting. Those ties at the moment seem a whole lot more even. So that was it from me from the Champions League. Let me know how you saw these games. Who do you think will yeah, are the favorites? City. It's City. Yeah. In any case, thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, I'll talk to you soon about more things. In my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.